The Greek crisis is having an impact on the economic performance of European economies. The euro has become weaker and obviously investments are going to be affected. You have seen on some days the stock markets have performed very badly. And once you have that kind of problem in major economies, it affects the demand for some of the things we export like copper. The European Union as a whole is a major consumer of copper and when they've got problems of this nature yeah. it does affect demand for commodities. How worried are you? Well we are worried in many ways but firstly once the, the demand for copper goes down the price goes down and that affects our, our situation at home. Yeah. Right now for instance we've seen over the last two weeks or so the price of copper has started to go down mm -hmm. and also the quacha has started to depreciate. Mm -hmm. So those Have you are issues. Sure. Have you gone back to your books to relook at your growth forecast? Has it come to that stage yet? Well, the growth forecast is an interesting issue. As you know, last year was a very bad year for all the economies in, in the world. Yeah. Uh, although Africa fared slightly better than uh, the, the global economy average. But Zambia was an exception. We did very well last year. We actually had a growth rate of 6.3%. Now, if you compare, any, I don't think there are many countries that achieved that. Some of the commentators have said we had one of the best performances last year, 6.3. Now, there are several factors which explain this. One, the quick recovery in the price of copper. We also had a very good uh, bumper harvest in maize, grain production, which is very important also for inflation. And uh, sectors like uh, construction, manufacturing were doing well. It was only tourism which didn't do well. So last year was an excellent year for us. Mm -hmm. And this year? This year we expect to do even better. You'll be surprised. Better than the 6.2%? Yeah, yeah. Because already the results for grain production have come in. Yeah. And I can tell you this year's harvest is 47% more than last, last year's year. harvest. So things so are looking good. So it's a bumper, good. bumper. And again, uh, grain is very important because if, uh, food prices in all African countries are key towards inflation. So we True. expect even lower levels of inflation this year. Okay. But food, if maize price comes down, we expect also stock feed prices will come down. Yeah. And all these things are key towards our success. So what's your target for this year? Personally, I've been saying between seven and eight. It will not be off the mark. Do you think Greece will derail that forecast? They could, yes. And we hope that the European Union can work hard to address the Greek problem. But most important going forward, to work out a mechanism where they can enforce fiscal discipline. Because they've got a monetary uh, union, which has been working well with the euro, but the euro itself on its own uh, with the current arrangements cannot survive if, on the other hand, governments are spending in a very uncontrolled manner. Yeah. So that's the issue to be addressed. Let's come to the other thing, the inflation outlook. You are saying you're expecting inflation to be better than expected because of the bumper maize crop. Yes. What numbers are we talking about here? Well, according to this year's budget, the minister put the target at 8%. Okay. Now, already we're at 92 Now, let me say in 2008, at the height of the crisis, we ended uh, the year at 166 So last year we did very well. We ended at 99 okay. And this year, we, the, the target is 8 and so far with the bump harvest of maize and all the other things that are going on, uh, we expect to do even better. But of course, you see, a growing economy also has got inflationary pressures. Sure, sure. But all this taken into account, the pressures coming from uh, the growth that we are experiencing and also the positive aspects on food production, we expect that eight is a reasonable target. Okay, so you reckon you might be able to undershoot that? Well, possibly, yes, we could. I don't see any reason why we can't really. Indeed. Now, one of the issues that has come out of the discussions here is economic and monetary uh, integration. And mm. one of the points that you personally raise is that it's very difficult to implement monetary integration when you have got divergent economies and we have got economies at different stage of development. Does that spell the end of the SADC dream, at least in as far as current, city, uh, current convergence is concerned? Not necessarily. I think what we have been saying, and this is not the first time that especially central bankers have been saying this. We've been saying that ultimately we must have monetary integration. But it's the timing. Hmm. The How timing, the timing is not up? right. You know, uh, I was very happy in the meeting there, for instance, the, the response of the governor uh, of uh, Nigeria when he was saying that, you know, you don't need, first of all, you need to grow your trade. What, what is the purpose of monetary union? So I can come you to can, Zambia with my rand and be able to buy whatever I want. Well, you can run this uh, hard currency of the region, but what we are trying to do, if I can tell you, already with Mozambique, we have signed 
a currency uh, export arrangement. Sorry. Very soon we'll be signing with Malawi. What we want is a situation where somebody coming from a neighboring country should not go through a U.S. dollar to get the Zambian kwacha. Mm -hmm. You can come with the South African rand and get kwacha. What about somebody the, the, can the... come with the Zimbabwean whatever <laughs> and get the Zambian kwacha. <laughs> <laughs> Governor, we have to leave it there. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. That's Governor Khaled.